quite often in statistics, we're concerned with comparing the mean from more than just two groups. In the past, we compared two groups with a t-test. But here, when we compare more than two groups, we need a different statistical test. And that's what we're going to look at today. How do we compare? the means of more than two groups. This actually also works with two groups, but the t-test is easier. The t-test turns out to be a special case of this thing that is called the ANOVA. But the t-test is easier for two groups, so we do the t-test. But when there's more than two groups, we use this test called the ANOVA. ANOVA is actually an acronym. It stands for Analysis of Variance. And the idea behind the ANOVA is we compare the variance between the groups to the variance within the groups. And when we divide them, we end up with an F statistic. And so we can compare using the F ratio, just like we did with two variances. So a couple differences with the ANOVA, the hypothesis test. For the hypothesis, the null hypothesis is always the same that the first mean is equal to the second mean, which is equal to the third mean, which is equal to all the other means until you get to the very last mean. Basically, all the means are the same. And the alternative hypothesis is that at least one mean is different. We don't know which mean, but just one mean is different than the rest. Possibly all three are different from each other. And we use the F test to compare which hypothesis we'll end up going with. What we're doing is we are looking for a difference. but not where the difference is. Turns out that once we decide that there actually is a difference between one of the means, we have to do some follow-up statistical tests, which are beyond the scope of this course, to identify specifically where that difference is. We might have an idea where it is, but to get the exact difference, we need follow-up tests that we're not going to cover in this course. So for today, all we're looking at is, are they all the same, or is there a difference somewhere? We're not going to spend our time in this course with the complex calculations of the ANOVA. We're just going to look at actually carrying it out and having our calculator do the complex calculations. How we're going to do this is we're going to put each group in its own list. And the way we do that is we'll hit the Stat button. And then we'll select Edit to edit our list. And in list one, we'll put the first group data. List two, we'll put the second group data. List three, the third group data, until we get all of our groups. And once all of our groups are actually listed in there, we will run the test. And we'll do that with the stat button. We will scroll over to tests. And then we will scroll down to the ANOVA. Now, the ANOVA will not give us prompts on what information to enter in like a lot of the other statistical tests did. So what we need to do is we're going to enter the lists separated by commas. And the way we get the list is we'll hit second 
and then select the list number. And we'll see how that all works out with our example. Let's go ahead and move to our example and see if we can compare this time, this context, we're going to compare three groups and see if they have the same mean or different means. A university is comparing traditional students, transfer students, and non-traditional students. By comparing GPA in the junior year, here are their results. The traditional students had GPAs of 3.2, 3.4, 3.7, 3.8. The transfer students had GPAs of 3.1, 2.7, 2.9, 3.2, and 4.0. And the non-traditional students had GPAs of 3.4, 2.2, 2.7, and 2.8. We want to know if all three groups can be considered to have the same GPA or different GPAs. If alpha equals 0.10, can the university conclude there is a difference in the groups? Scroll up and give ourselves a little room and start our hypothesis test. The null hypothesis is that the mean of the traditional students is equal to the mean of the transfer students, which is equal to the mean of the non-traditional students, that they all have the same mean. The alternate hypothesis is that at least, possibly more, one group have a different GPA. Let's go ahead and run this test on our calculator and see what happens. First thing we need to do on the calculator is enter our data into stats, and we'll select Edit. If there's extra stuff in this list, you can highlight and hit Clear Enter, and that'll delete the list, or clear the list. Clear Enter. Clear Enter. And so in list one, I'm going to put the GPAs 3.2, 3.4, 3.7, and 4.0. List two is my second group, 3.1, 2.7, 2.9, 3.8. Three point two and 4.0. The non-traditional group, 3.4, 2.2, 2.7, and 2.8. Now let's go ahead and run the ANOVA. We'll hit STAT, and this time going over to TEST. And all the way down to the bottom, or hitting UP gets us straight to the bottom, you'll see ANOVA. For the ANOVA, we enter in our list. We had the three lists, so second, one for the first list, comma, second, two for the second list, comma, second, three. And we'd keep going based on how many lists we have. We only had three lists. And when we hit enter, we get all sorts of information. 
We've got our F statistic of 3.07. We've got our P value of 0 0.09. Under factor, you'll see we've got degrees of freedom equals 2. And under error, we've got degrees of freedom equals 10. The other numbers we're not going to concern ourselves with today. But those degrees of freedom represent the numerator and the denominator. So the factor is the numerator 2. The error is the denominator 10. They are in order, which is nice. So when we say our distribution, we'll say f is distributed as an f statistic with 2 and 10 degrees of freedom. And we just found out that f equals 3.07. And more specifically, our p-value, that's the important one, was 0 0.0912. I'm going to also go ahead and draw a picture of what's happening. There's my f distribution my test statistic at 3.07. And we shade that tail, which we now know has an area of 0 0.0912. Now, speaking of the p-value, what that p-value means is based on our sample, the probability all three groups of students have the same mean GPA in the junior year is 9.12%. We've got a 9% chance that all three groups have the exact same probability. A p-value is the probability the null hypothesis is true, which means we are ready to make a decision. The decision is based on the alpha. We said alpha is 0.10. We're going to believe the null hypothesis is true until there's less than 10% chance it actually is true. We, we have a 9% chance that it's true. So that passes our threshold, so we will reject the null hypothesis. And the reason for that decision is that the p-value is less than the alpha, or the 0 0.0912 is less than the 0.10 we said was our decision breakpoint. So our conclusion? in context of the alternative hypothesis is that there is sufficient evidence, because we rejected, to conclude the mean GPA of traditional transfer and non-traditional students in the junior year is not the same. Again, I'll notice this test doesn't tell us which group is different from the rest, or possibly all three groups are different from each other. It just tells us that they're not all the same. So that's the ANOVA. It's another use of the F distribution. There's actually several types of ANOVA. This is the most basic that we're going to look at in this course. And you can see more ANOVAs and more advanced statistics courses. But for now, we're comparing do multiple groups have the same mean. We plug it into our calculator. We get an F statistic and a P value. And we should be able to conclude, do they all have the same mean? Or is there a difference somewhere in the group? Try a few of these on the homework. We'll talk about it more in class. And we will see you then.